enemy tenacity is the one I want to tell you about and this one is absolutely OP because it does nothing. They get the maximum hit points increase but they don't get it refilled at the start of the match. So a promise of glory will give us a ganger of level 7. Crazy. Hello people of the earth and welcome back to Quicksave TV. My name is Mike and this is another guide in Necromunda. Uh, here we're going to be talking about the infamy system and how you can game it to get the highest benefit for your uh, gameplay. For this we're going to create a new gang and we're going to call it whatever actually doesn't really matter let's go with ashers the one two three right the infamous one two three it's going to be our gang <laughs> and um, i'm going to show you how you can use your infamy in order to get some nice juicy benefits we already have some crew we don't really care um that's a fine crew no one really cares so let's go to to operations and begin an operation that we want we can go into any operation we desire, but let's go for the sake of comparison into a deadly operation and um, see what's up. Uh, we're going to choose our facilities and we're going to choose our things. As you can see, I already have a lot of infamy points and let's talk first how you actually can get the infamy points. I think it's very interesting. Um, now. The way you can get infamy points is by completing various tasks connection, connected with operations, careers of your characters, with combat, with cosmetic customization, with equipment, with gangs, with hired gang, guns, or basically experienced gang, gangers, with multiplayer matches, right? I think I have... Uh... I don't. <laughs> it sucks. And the story, but it's bugged for some reason for me. Now, with uh, operations, right, it's very easy. The more you win, the more difficult ma ma missions you win, the more points you're going to get. These are one time rewarded to you and they are never gone, right? They will always refresh when you create a new clan, when you create a new gang, or when you go to another mission, right? So this is why on some of my other uh, gangs you can see that, oh, I have three points, why didn't I spend them? Well, simply speaking, right? I didn't have them at that point. Now, here I already have the Conqueror 9. That's the one you get from the highest difficulty setting when you have a strong enough gang. 6,000 strength, right? Um, and this is very straightforward. It's also very beneficial here to win as Asher, Goliath, and Orlok, right? To complete the single operation as them, right? In terms of careers, right? It asks you to get 5 active and 5 passive abilities to rank 1 on every character class and then to level them up to highest level on every character class. Which is anyway something you have to be doing as a priority, it's very important. It makes your gang much stronger, much more uh, capable than just level up stats. I've already talked about it in another video, you can check it out if you want. I'm talking detail how to level up your characters properly. Now, in terms of combat, uh, it has to do with uh, taking down uh, various uh, enemies, right? Lay mechanics, like, it, 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 has, it asks you to do 10, 50, and then 100, right? Again, another source, but it's very slow, very grindy. And here you have cosmetic customization. So you can customize and apply gang colors in one gang, right? And then on five gangs. Uh, again, you can, very, you can easily game it and just create five gangs and theoretically just add customizations there. For, for some reason, it's not counted. Maybe it's bugged as well. Here, in terms of equipment, right, it asks asks you to equip the fighters with rank 5 weaponry, right? And then all fighters with rank 5 weaponry. Very interesting, very difficult to do because it takes a lot of time and money. And here, uh, numbers, very easy to do. Just get a bunch of numbers and a bunch of soldiers and then get them to rank 10, which is, again, a very slow process, but you're going to get there. In terms of hired guns, just hiring experienced top juves, which cost, I think, um, a little extra, you know, a little extra. So we're going to take a look quickly, I'm curious. Uh, so top juves cost you 700 um, credits. That's a lot of money, you might think at the moment, but it's not, right? It's not a lot of money. It's very easy to um, accumulate that much and you will be able to do it. So mm, the reason I'm taking this, ah, yeah, well, I mean, I guess it's not necessary. You can go to any, uh, let's uh, take a look at the more realistic scenario. I think I would go into this. 
this is something I can realistically expect to do. Uh, and here, right, and, and we stopped on uh, Hired Muscle, cool, 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 and then you have multiplayer rewards as well, which you should, I think mm, the best strategy you can follow is to focus on leveling up your squad to a maximum level, right? And then you can play PvP as much as you want. Um, uh, uh, when the game is fixed, when the game works and you have no crashes in PvP, it's going to be more likely to enjoy these types of games and you are more likely to win them also because it's going to be highly unlikely to find the enemy on a low level because, I mean, people will just be very against uh, that type of scenario. But when you have an experienced opponent, I mean, he will be very likely to want to fight you. Now, in terms of your facilities, right, again, you set this up when you select a sector, right? When you select the sector. And once you select the sector, until you finish the sector, you cannot change those, right? If you abandon the sector, they stay with you. So you have to be very, very careful about what you choose. All of those things, they give you various choices, right? And they stay the same for every clan, for every mission. They stay the same, but in your, you can only choose two. Gambling Dan and Brewery gives you extra small amount of experience and give you extra small amount of credits. Now, if you want experience, training grounds is by far the best choice. If you want money, again, that's very negligible. 35 credits is essentially the cost of one uh, sold weapon at rank 1. A rank 5 weapon costs 150 credits, so it's not, a, it's not a very good way to make money. But concoction consumables can be very good, especially when you play Asher uh, gang, right? So it's a good idea for Ashers. Salvaging benches is a great overall source of materials, of, supp of different supplies, right? It gives you offensive explosives and it gives you tactical explosives. But most importantly, it gives you armor, right? It's very difficult to get armor in this game. So this facility is actually, excuse me, incredible at getting you new armor, right? So if that's something you're looking for, salvaging benches is incredible. Medical lab is an incredible facility because it prevents injuries. Injuries can range from mostly negligible to career-ending, and you want to avoid those as much as possible. I end up taking a medical lab on every run I do, on every um, uh, clan, just in case. If you make a mistake so it's not career-ending, so it's not catastrophic, you don't want to lose your fighters due to injuries. However, there are some Steam achievements that are connected with getting those injuries and permanently losing your limbs in order to replace them with cybernetics. So if that's something you're into, sure, okay. But overall, losing your fighters is always a big blow to you. It's always a problem. And Medical Lab slowly offsets, uh, no, no, slightly offsets or neutralizes this risk. Very good facility. And training ground is just OP, right? Hiring fighters for a lower cost is very good for many reasons, for two exploits I showed you before, and um, reducing the cost of skill upgrades is just absolutely fantastic. So we're going to do this. And now, in terms of infamy uh, abilities, the strongest infamy abilities are in this rank. So getting more infamy points is very, very good, very, very important. But there are some of them that are very interesting and I want to mention uh, separately. House Blessing and um, House Blessing is a very, very uh, cheap one and it gives you a nice bonus of three loot caskets if you complete the request of your house it's a very th easy thing to do and it's a very cheap in terms of infamy points and you should take it as a beginner player it's really nice i end up taking it often um, as a even when having so many points i still take this thing very good in tier two right wealthy benefactor is complete garbage as i told you this is not a sum of money you have to care about persistent haggler is amazing because you're gonna sell a lot of enemy equipment to the shop Bar Bargain Hunter is also nice because when you buy things from the shop, you're gonna spend less money. Promise of Fame is incredible because of the exploit I showed you yesterday, uh, or hopefully I showed you yesterday, that allows you to get more experience for your buck. This is a great, great thing. It will give you a great character and uh, it will immediately join you. I will show it to you. It's really crazy. Now, House Weapons, Melee Weapons, again, it can be nice, but not of rank 1 to 2. Ranged Weapons, rank 1 2, not good. House Request Armor, when you begin the game only, right, that's a great addition to your arsenal, but as you go into the game, right? You want to focus on obtaining level 5 and level 6 
the weapons um, and you know that's why it can be a bit of a problem and here again you get a bunch of nice support consumables and offensive consumables like if you want sure sure but I'm, like, the most important here is promise of fame it's really cool as well as persistent haggler and bargain hunter those two I end up taking almost always I love them so much they're so so beneficial this is completely useless never take it number three epic right so loyal client discount uh, capitalistic right so this is nice and this is nice if no no the capitalistic is awful it's it's almost as bad as wealthy benefactor it's just a little better but the problem here is that it costs 18 points at maximum right I've never mentioned it right you can upgrade those things to the next rank but they cost the same amount of points so for 18 points I'm going to get 45 credits per uh, no it's completely it's awful it's awful trust me I have thousands of credits on my more successful gangs and um, this is just nothing it's very expensive and it gives you nothing Thing. The cost of hiring fighter is reduced. That's pretty nice, right? That can yield you a nice um, cut in your expenses. High roller is very nice in combination with loyal clients discount. Enemy tenacity is the one I want to tell you about. And this one is absolutely OP because it does nothing. It tells you here it gives the enemy the bonus HP. And if you level up to the highest level, it gives 100 in, uh, HP to the enemy, which is a lot of hit points. But it's not actually how it works, right? It doesn't work like this. They don't actually get these hit points. They get the maximum hit points increase. But they don't get it refilled at the start of the match. So we have a lot of characters who have, let's say, 200 out of 300 HP, which does nothing, realistically. So you can always safely take it, and by this, you will get five additional loot caskets and additional 50% of um, credits at the end of the mission. Very good, we take it only for caskets, basically, but it's a really, really, really good way to get some extra cool items, especially when you're going on highest difficulty setting, where this basically does nothing for the enemy, but it makes you have a lot more caskets. Enemy ferocity is something I advise you taking against if you have no experience. Even if you have a lot of experience, it can be kind of dangerous, and it will be a real damage increase from your enemy. Very scary sometimes but enemy tenacity is very free you should always take it it's really easy to deal with now they stack apparently but they don't I tried it only the last one on the list that you have will apply right so if you get 60 enemy tenacities right I'm sorry it's not going to work they're not gonna stack the rewards are not gonna stack I tried it it doesn't work don't make this mistake you only want one of them right but I think enemy tenacity and enemy ferocity will stack, so you can do that if you like. House implants are nice, because it's a great way to get more implants. They're very difficult to get in large numbers. Uh, melee weapons and ranged weapons, again, that's a nice level. Again, that's a very nice addition. And some armor of level 3, 4 is a very nice addition to your survivability. Sponsorships, offensive consumables or support consumables. Can be very nice, because rank 5 is essentially, I think, the highest level of consumables. I've never seen a consumable of rank 6, so that's something you can consider, right? Very good. And another is the top level, of course, legendary rewards words those are absolutely insane right those are absolutely insane and they can give you like absolutely insane bonus some useless bonuses too like okay this one is useless <laughs> So, it gives you just six caskets at the start of the match. Not very good, not very useful. But this can be incredible. So, a promise of glory will give us a ganger of level 7, right? Crazy. Uh, but it's not the only crazy thing here. We can have elite training, which will give us some extra experience. It's not too much, but it stacks. But even better than this, right? Even better than this. You have very nice neuro inhibitors and neuro inhibitors are absolutely absurd because at rank 5 they will give your character plus 900 experience and you will have five of them 900 experience think about it it's absolutely insane right so uh yes we have this here we can have elite training if we like we can have multiple stacks of neuro inhibitors if we want. We can have melee weapons of rank 5. We can have ranged weapons of rank 5 or armor of rank 5. Again, a lot of them very useful, very powerful. We can discount the implant surgeon. And bionic upgrades, as far as I know, is, is what you get when you lose limbs, right? So, something to think about. So, let's get a bunch of house armor. Let's throw away neuro... No, it's very nice. It's very nice. Let's get uh, some armor. But let's actually, armor is not so important right now. 
Let's get some ranged weapons. And let's get some melee weapons too. And we get another point free. We're going to invest it into... All right, infamous crew, why not, right? So this way we spent a lot of our points and I talked you through all of the benefits and negatives and let's actually see what we start with, right? After all of those choices. Let's take a look at our crew. We have the same crew, or do we? We have a character with 950 experience who joined us. Does he have any wounds? She doesn't. So she's a fantastic character of a high, high, high level. And we have Mama Pramone, right? Does she have any wounds? No wounds, again. And a cut amazing character that we got from the start, um, just from our infamy, right? It's almost like a, entering a cheat code, if you think about it, right? And then we have, uh, in our uh, inventory, you can see that we don't have all of those weapons and armors. Why? Where are they? Well, they are here, right? Let's open the casket. We get Neuro Inhibitors plus 900 experience, right? And you can get multiple of those. Absolutely amazing. 420 all the way. And then we get ranged weaponry casket. Amazing Autogun, Flamer, Bolt Pistol, and Acid Thrower, right? So, it doesn't even matter so much uh, what we get, as long as we get it, if you think about it. And now let's take a look at our, um, our Deadeye, right? Let's compare your puny little rifle to the Autogun that we got. It's double the damage. It's double the damage. Your one-handed pistols will deal the same damage as your puny little rifle. This is the difference you get from getting the, ba uh, the best, basically, items, right? Let's take a look if we got an upgrade here. We did not. I think we got a new flamer, right? So, again, let's take a look at the new flamer. It's almost double the damage of our original flamer. Or we can get an acid thrower of level 5, which will have similar bleed effect. It will have similar damage to our flamethrower, but it will also have a poison damage on top of that right here you go uh and here did we get anything nice no not so much right so it wasn't the best drop but again free level five weapons are you kidding me yes please let's open the melee casket we have rock drill power swords which which are really great right they're pretty good massive axe spot jacker and massive club again we're in great shape and we can actually equip our characters with some of the best uh, weapons that exist in the game and for our secondary we can give her a spot jacker right so she's level five completely decked out and now we have a lot of uh, opportunities to actually and if we want to we can sell those items right don't don't forget that because they cost a lot of money i don't plan to use those pistols i can just sell them right boom i have 500 free uh, gold um, again, based of uh, credits, credits based on our um, discounts and uh, based on our increased gain from selling. So yeah, take a look at that. So this is the way you can use infamy system to your benefit, and the way you, of course, to bikes to expand all of those points available to you. You want to do these missions over there, right? Some of them are incredibly easy to do, like hired guns, like um, gang. Some of those are very easy to do, and uh, careers are very easy to do. Some of them are are very straightforward. They're Operations, right? As you go forward, you get more and more points. And once you unlock them, they are available to any gang you're going to have. Let's try to customize it and see if we can unlock another perk for me. So I get something from this too. Confirm changes. Doesn't work. I think it's bugged, right? But whatever, you know. So this is the way it works. Customization. Yeah, it doesn't. Ah, okay. So now it works. Very strange on five gangs. Okay, well, that's how it works, right? So, thank you so much for watching and listening. I hope this was helpful. If it was, don't forget to put a like on this video. Um, subscribe to see more content on Necromanta and other games you love. Um, tell your friends about me and have a fantastic day.